In the immortal words of the sixth god, Drizzy Drake, back to back like I'm on the cover of Lethal Weapon, back to back like I'm Jordan 9697. From time to time, WWE will decide to run back their biggest WrestleMania matches the following year, sometimes in a part one, part two format, sometimes because it was so good they just had to do it again, and sometimes because they fucked it up the first time. Regardless of the reasoning, some of the biggest matches in WrestleMania history fall under this distinction, and well, now just feels like an appropriate time to shine a light on those matches. I'm Tempest Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the seven matches WWE did on back to back WrestleManias. I'm too hot. I'm too hot. I'm hot. I'm too hot. I'm, I'm so hot. I'm, I'm too hot. Luke, I'm too hot. I'm hot. I'm too hot. I'm in the sun. I'm too hot. Hot. I'm too hot. Pete, you need to use your words. I don't know what's wrong with you. What's wrong with you? Luke, I'm too hot. That can't be. It's not even that hot in here. I'm I'm too hot. It's it's like I'm wearing a jumper on my whole body. Ah. You need to shave your body hair, Pete. I need to shave my body hair. No, I I, I can't do that. There's no way I can do that safely. Of course there is. I do it all the time. It's why I'm so aerodynamic. Will that cure my hotness? Does for me. It's why I look hot, yet stay cool. What you need is manscaped. Manscaped? Yes, Manscaped! Manscaped has top-notch quality and unmatched value with their latest grooming and hygiene bundle, the Performance Package 5.0 oh, 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 Ultra, featuring their all-new Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra Electric Trimmer. And guess what? It does not stop there. When you purchase the Performance Package 5.0 oh, 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 Ultra, you'll receive not one, but two free gifts. Head on over to manscaped.com and get your hands on the Performance Package 5.0 oh, 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 Ultra today. When you use my promo code PFK, you'll get 20% off plus free international shipping and those two free gifts. Wow, Luke, I am completely hairless from the neck down now. I feel great. Words could only do so much, Pete. You need to show the people. Uh, no, uh, no, no, I, I, no, I didn't sign up for that. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Show them. Honorable mention, Shawn Michaels vs. Bret Hart, WrestleManias 12 and 13. Well, this was supposed to be a back-to-back -back WrestleMania match, but then Shawn took an arrow to the smile, and we all know what happened next. We did not get the follow-up to the longest WrestleMania match in history, rather we got maybe the best WrestleMania match in history, and personally, I'll make that trade, even if it makes this list one entry shorter. Number 7, Roman Reigns vs. Cody Rhodes, WrestleManias 39 and 40. Since we currently only have one half of the equation to talk about for this one, we'll start here. A rematch one year in the making, and a rematch that probably shouldn't have ever been necessary. We are rapidly approaching WrestleMania 40 and the rematch between Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes, and thus we will soon be able to say once and for all whether or not waiting another year actually made Cody's coronation more meaningful. For the last 12 months, the answer has been a resounding no, but maybe with the context of both matches having happened, we will get a different answer. As it stands, Cody Rhodes vs. Roman Reigns from WrestleMania 39 is one of the greatest WrestleMania main events ever until the last 10 seconds, when the laziest bullshit finish put the final chapter of Cody's story on hiatus. And while the inclusion of The Rock has certainly given Roman Cody 2 a shot of hype, it remains to be seen whether the sequel will be able to capture the magic of the first 34 minutes and 18 seconds of the original. Number 6. Bret Hart vs. Yokozuna, WrestleManias 9 and 10. WrestleMania 10 is the, sorry Bret, mania after the disaster that was WrestleMania 9. The old school fans answer for the worst WrestleMania and for good reason. Mania 9's main event of burgeoning champion Bret Hart having to cut his main event match short because Yokozuna was gassed, and then getting absolutely cucked by Hulk Hogan, appearing out of thin air to win the title was, how do you say, not very good in case you hadn't heard in the last 30 years. It was so not good, in fact, that WWE decided to simply play the Uno Reverse card the following year and have Royal Rumble winner Bret win the title back and also get to have the greatest opening match in Mania history all in one night. Once again, this was the Sorry Bret Mania. Neither of the matches are by any means classic Mania main events, but they both perfectly encapsulate WWE's reluctance to commit to Bret as the top guy in 1993 over their tried and true big and muscly approach and the sheer undeniable deniability of Bret Hart as the top star of the company in 1994. And thankfully, with Bret closing out Mania 10 on the babyface's shoulders, the apology was as loud as the disrespect. Number 5, Hulk Hogan vs. Andre the Giant, WrestleManias 3 and 4. The main event of WrestleMania 3 is probably the most iconic moment in WWE history. The ninth match on the never-ending card of WrestleMania 4? 
isn't. It makes plenty of sense why WWE would have wanted to have Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant on yet another of their biggest shows after the massive success of WrestleMania 3 and the Saturday Night's main event, where Andre quote unquote beats Hogan for the title, but their match at WrestleMania 4 carries none of the significance of either of their previous two matches. Partially due to being in the middle of a monotonous show like WrestleMania 4, and partially due to it being just as poorly wrestled as their predecessors with a much worse finish. There was no Hogan slamming Andre, there was no double Hebner fiasco, there was only Hulk Hulk Hogan swinging a chair around, resulting in a double DQ and both men's elimination from the world title tournament, which is bullshit because Andre did nothing to warrant a disqualification. Justice for Andre the Giant. Number 4. The Hardys vs. The Dudleys vs. Edge and Christian, WrestleMania's 2000 and X7. Right. Now we're getting to that good good. In this case, WWE not only ran back the match, but the stipulation as well, and this time, they gave the lads chairs. At WrestleMania 2000, the Hardys, Dudleys, and Edge and Christian made themselves bona fide superstars with a first ever triangle ladder match in WWE history. A match filled with tables, ladders, and somehow no chairs. Hmm. It's strange, those seem like the most common one. But this ladder match was so good that it intertwined these three teams for the next 12 months and beyond, as they came together once again in the first ever TLC match at SummerSlam, and then the legendary TLC2 at WrestleMania X7. And somehow, all three of them were won by Edge and Christian. Cheers lads, bringing home all the gold that the Leafs can. Mania X7 is the greatest mania of all time, made that way in no small part due to the greatest TLC match of all time. It would have been impossible to continue to escalate the kind of violent car crash madness that these six lads were putting themselves through without a casualty being suffered, so I'm very glad that WrestleMania 18 didn't see a TLC 3 Pete, but these two matches will stand as the only time an undercard mania match was so impeccable that WWE had to do it again the next year. Number 3. Shawn Michaels vs. The Undertaker WrestleMania's 25 and 26. Quite possibly the matches of the highest quality on this list. Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker's WrestleMania double feature stands as really the only notable highlight of both WrestleMania 25 and 26. At WrestleMania 25, it isn't even close, with nothing coming within a country mile of their match's quality. A match so good that even The Undertaker doing a swan dive into an imaginary pool and nearly dying couldn't stop people from calling this the greatest match of all time for the last decade and a half. And a match so good that WWE decided that the best course of action for WrestleMania 26 was just to do it again and have Shawn go out on an all-time classic. Unsurprisingly, that is exactly what we got with some aspects of their Mania 26 classic, even surpassing their previous match, even if it wouldn't reach the original's iconic status. The selling in this Mania 26 match is so f***ing incredible, with Undertaker tweaking his knee coming off the ropes with old school, only to then no-sell that worked injury until Shawn was able to target it. It is masterful stuff, but really nothing in this match tops the the finish from 25, where a perfectly executed moonsault was the showstopper's undoing. This is one of the best examples of the Mania sequel done well, as everything about their first match played into the story of their second, and made for one hell of a video package to promote it. Number 2, Triple H vs The Undertaker, WrestleMania's 27 and 28. And then WWE did it again. Following the immense success of the Undertaker Shawn Michaels doubleheader, WWE tried to recreate that magic and turn things into an Undertaker DX story. And to their credit, a lot of the storytelling surrounding the two matches that Undertaker and Triple H had at WrestleMania 27 and 28 was exceptional. Not any of the, we're the last two real stars around, there's no challenge left but you, shit. That was fing stupid. But when Shawn Michaels finally returned to Raw to confront Triple H and ask why he thought he could do what Shawn couldn't, and then Undertaker goading Triple H into accepting his challenge a year later by saying Sean was always better than him, ooh, that is the kind of character-based storytelling that is just, ooh, it's so delightful for me. And as for the matches, I, for one, am a big fan of the match that Triple H and Taker have at WrestleMania 27. The action may be slow at times, but it actually does service the story in this case, whereas that is absolutely not the case with many of Triple H's Mania matches. And this match was the time that I actually thought there might have been a sliver of a chance that WWE would be so stupid to have Triple H end the streak. That sliver of doubt was all it took, my friends. I didn't have that doubt in many of Taker's matches. And of course, their Mania 28 Hell in a Cell match was a perfect conclusion to the four Mania long series between The Undertaker and those two dickheads from the 90s, complete with what many people say is the greatest nearfall in wrestling history when even DX's combined might couldn't kill the dead man. And number one, John Cena vs. The Rock, WrestleMania's 28 and 29. Once in a lifetime, woo! 
This bit of bullshit marketing may be the second most nauseating example of WWE's flagrant false advertising after the words greatest Royal Rumble, but in terms of WrestleMania, it takes the top spot. You may notice a bit of a trend from this era of WrestleMania, but WWE really did like to stretch these main event stories out from Mania to Mania, and while matches like Taker and DX justified that decision with their quality and storytelling, John Cena and The Rock's back-to-back -back Mania main events after the soiling of WrestleMania 27 to get them there did not. Don't get me wrong, Cena and The Rock going head to head at WrestleMania 28 felt huge, the next step in the past versus present Mania timeline that had occurred when The Rock faced Hulk Hogan. But their Mania 28 match was broadly fine and very long, and then the story WWE told with John Cena in the year that followed remains one of the most baffling bits of nonsense WWE has ever produced. Sure, the idea of Cena losing to The Rock causing his downward spiral makes sense, but when in the following 12 months he beat the returning Brock Lesnar, won Money in the Bank, and won the Royal Rumble, I'm not going to buy it when you tell me that losing to The Rock ruined Cena's life. And what did it accomplish in the end? A watered down version of their match from the year before that everyone has memed on since. Twice in a lifetime indeed. So here's hoping you do better than this, Roman and Cody. The bar is fortunately not very high. And that's our list. Make sure, of course, that you like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications always on, and check out this clip from our Patreon exclusive survival series. Hardcore. Just start at the beginning. Uh, mankind. Ding. Mick Foley. Ding. Okay, hardcore. Mick Foley. Ding. I should just go with the with the easy ones out the way. Um, Crash Holly. Ding. Hardcore Holly.